Hello everybody, Root Beer here, and I hope you're all doing well. I really do. And uh, we're going to be continuing our look at the Grade 7 uh, Gauss paper from 2010, so I hope you're all excited for that. Uh, we'll be looking at question number... I've got it here. Question number 18 uh, on our Gauss paper. So what have we got? Distinct points are placed on a circle. Each pair of points is joined with a line segment. I don't know if anyone else is... This 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 sort of looks like an optical illusion. I'm sure this is a circle, but when I look at it, it's not bulging the right way. That's kind of cool. Might be some sort of optical illusion there. Anyway, uh, each uh, pair of points is joined with a line segment. An example with four points and six line segments is shown. That's what we've got over here. If six distinct points are placed on a circle, how many lines would there be? Okay. Now... For people who like geometry, you might be wondering, well, what's the deal with the circle? They're just trying to make sure make sure that uh, the six points you choose don't all line up on a line, because then there might be some debate as to how many line segments there actually are. Okay, and we, and we don't want anything like that. Okay, so we've got them around a circle. That way, no three will form a line. They will not be collinear, is the term. Okay, so what could we do? Well, here's what I think a lot of people would do. And a lot of people, especially because this is one of their first math contests that they might be writing. Draw yourself a picture and then uh, get yourself some points. I'm going to call them A, B. Uh, they don't have to be evenly spaced out, but I think it would probably help with drawing my picture. But I'll, I'll make a few a little uneven. C, D, E, and we go all the way up to F. So I've got six points here. Now, if you want to, be very, very careful and just, just draw them out, okay? Now, someone who's going really fast will just uh, sort of... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they'll start going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, uh, eight, uh, uh, nine, ten. Okay, it's ten because they can't think of any more. They're drawing too hastily and drawing without a pattern and this is a very bad thing to do okay you know there's there's clearly some some picture stuff going on here there might be some geometry that we need to know or something like that but uh at the end of the day we are counting we're counting something that might be a little foreign to us we might not have seen a counting problem quite like this and anytime you encounter a counting problem that uh you haven't seen before you want to take it slow Sometimes you look at smaller cases. I'm not going to look at that five points around a circle or something like that. Okay, but you, you're going to want to take it slow, and you're going to want to, above all, take it in an orderly fashion. Okay, you're not just going to be drawing lines and counting in your head at random. Have a pattern. This is true for any counting problem. If you're listing things out, find a way to list them out so that you don't miss anything. Okay, because when counting is what you're looking for, and you miss just that one, Suddenly, you don't have the right answer. And on a multiple choice contest, you either have the right answer or you don't. Okay? It's not a written contest. You don't get part marks because you were nearly there and you showed some of your work. Okay? So we want a pattern. So I've labeled my points A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm going to start with A, connect it up to every other point. Start with, and then go to B and connect it to everything that it's not already connected to. Okay? I'm even going to use different colored lines here. So A will get purple, so, and I can count now if I want to. One, two, three, four, five. And I can even put a little five by A, and that would be fine. Or if I, you know, I've got different colored pens, I could count them all at the end, because they're, they're going to be nice and distinct. But I've run through everything with A. Now B, I don't draw from B to A, because I've already got A to B. And lines don't have direction. So B to A is the same thing. So that's already counted. So 1 for B to C. D. E. F. We've got four of them coming from B. Let's use blue for C. Again, we're not going to go back to A or to B. Those are already counted for. C to D. C to E. C to F. We're starting to get less and less each time, you'll notice because we've already reached C from two previous uh, lowerly alphabetized letters. So D goes to E and F, it's got two of them. And it's kind of a nice pattern, and this can generalize 
if you want to talk about you know any number of points. But now we just add up the numbers around the circle. Four, uh, five, four, three, two, one. Add them all up. And that's going to be 15. And I know I've got them all because we've got a nice, neat, uh, well-ordered picture. I, I did it in, in one particular order. I didn't do some from A and then bounce to C and then do one from E to B. I did everything from A that I could find. Okay, 15's going to be our answer. And if you're interested in this sort of a thing, and I have a whole bunch of them, like if I had seven, I'm not even going to draw them, but this pattern actually continues. Okay, and you'll get uh, six lines from the first one, five from the next, four, three, two, one. And you add them up and you'll get 21. That's why you get six here for, in, in their specific example, one, uh, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and this, this is true for anything. So if I have uh, N of them, I'll be able to, to actually generate a pattern. The answer is, if I've got n around a circle, I'll get n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay? Uh, so, so n points will give me this many lines. Okay? And we're not going to delve into why this formula works. It's a very, very common formula. It's, these are called triangular numbers. And they're very nifty, but what I'd like to actually talk about is another way to think about the problem. Instead of drawing out a picture, we could we could think about it another way. Okay, this might be of interest to you. It might be a better way. It might even be the way you did it, and, and the line thing is new for you. Or maybe that formula n times n plus one over two is, is something new for you. And there are things that you can go and, and take and, and look up uh, online or elsewhere or ask other people about. Okay, but a different way to look at the problem is what makes a line. Okay, I have to connect two points on my circle. Okay. Any two points will do, and once I've picked those two points, there's only one line between them. So what could I do? Well, I could take each point, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I could just make all possible pairs. So I've got six points, and so if I wanted to pair uh, each uh, letter up with another one, I could do six choices for that first letter, and then there's five other points that that letter can be paired to. Okay, That gives me a total of 30 pairs. So, so we could view lines, our pairs of points. Okay? So there are six times five pairs of things like A, B, and that's the line from A to B. Or C, E, and that's a line from C to E. Okay. When we, when we think about this, this ordered pair here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, any letter will do here, but I can't send, I can't connect A to A, so it's out, but I could connect it to B, C, D, E, or F, so there's five choices of letter here, and we multiply them together, and that gives me 30 pairs of these pairs of, or 30 pairs of letters. So shouldn't that give me 30 lines? But I thought we said we only had 15 lines. Okay. Well, here's the trick. When I've got these pairs, yeah, I've got AB, I've got CE, I've also got EC. I've also got BA. Okay. I've got DA, but I've also got AD. And I haven't used F yet, so let's say I've also got I've got FE and I've also got EF. These are all being counted by my 30 pairs. Each letter, each pair of letters appears sort of twice, but one time in reverse order. But lines don't have orders. So CE is the line between C and E, but that's the same as the line between EC. So we need to get rid of all the duplicates. Okay, and that means we're going to divide by 2. 30 divided by 2. Okay, and so uh, that's going to be 15. By the way, I misspoke up here earlier. I just realized this, this actually shows why the formula works. But if I have n points around the circle, it's actually n times n minus 1. Because I had 6 times 5 and divided by 2. So this is why this is going to work out. It's kind of nice and nifty. But that's another way to see that our answer is going to be 15.
I think most people probably did the line thing, but thinking about lines not as an object that I draw, but as a pair of endpoints is it maybe a different way to think about things for some of you. And maybe it doesn't open up any doors now, but it might later. So our answer there is D. We'll put that right in the middle of everything. And that was question number 18. If you had a different way, you know, other than counting endpoints or drawing things out, I would love to hear about that in the comments. And either way, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you for question number 19 in the next video.